Hey good people, it's Mark from Vintage Audio Nagoya and we're going to go through an Elk EM4 professional high performance echo machine here. Uh, I've demoed these a few times on the channel but I've never uh, documented going through one. So if somebody has one of these, hopefully we can help you out with uh, what it looks like inside and fix any issues that might come up. So let's take a look at this beast right out of the blocks. We see a couple things that we can do. Uh, we're missing one of our black rubber uh, spacers here, and somebody has decided to go with a little black tape, it looks like, which we can replace that. I've got some parts laying around. Got a broken handle. You know, there's a metal uh, spring-like uh, handle on, uh, inside of this rubber, so it's in no danger of coming apart, but I may have something better than that over in the parts bin. We'll have to see. Uh, I may not, so we might have to skip that. Got a few uh, sections of missing Tolex here, and I'll show you my technique for solving that problem. We've got an end replaced here, which is not the end of the world. Oops, sorry, that wasn't intentional, but, um, you know, we may end up doing something there, but these things are, you know, they work, so we might just end up leaving that too. We'll see. Um, ideally, this would have a three-prong grounded plug added to it but Japan doesn't have a lot of those in use over here there's a lot of two prong stuff still so it's not common for me to get those cords uh, but anyway we'll, we'll think about that a little bit uh, there's a couple things I have noticed in addition we've got uh, the whole the whole unit is moving here and we're, it's because we're missing one screw and this is not the correct screw so we'll see about finding some better screws for it and inside we're looking pretty good. You know, I mean, I've definitely seen worse. So we'll clean all that up though. And uh, get this thing sounding great, hopefully. So uh, let's start by taking that one screw out. It's in there now. See what it looks like inside. This is a little bit too big of a driver, so. Let me grab a different screwdriver. I love working on these because uh, to get to, you know, the internals, it is two screws, which is about the easiest uh, cabinet to take apart that I've ever come across. High performance. All right, pretty consistent with uh, things we've got piece of dried up tape that's come off. It's a number 71 written on here. Just put that off to the side for now. And let's see what it looks like underneath. I think I'll start by unwinding this cord. And I'm happy with that. We're looking pretty good. Let's get a little bit more uh, height on this. There we go, a little better view. So, uh, I don't see any obvious issues here. We're looking pretty good. You know, these are built by human beings. So everybody was a little different. And this person trimmed their capacitors really high. You notice that? I don't know if you can see it well on the screen or not. But uh, typically those are cut a lot lower. But, it's, you know, again, it was built by a human being. And they just... They're consistent at this height, but it's interesting how long they are. Uh, I was working on something a few months back and dropped it and uh, went to grab it in midair. And I grabbed the, you know, these little ends here and it just shredded my, it was a heavy unit, just shredded my fingers. Oh, it's just like a cheese grater kind of. They were cut real short. Anyway, enough of horror stories. Let's, uh... Start by doing the norm. We're going to spray these pots just to get them uh, starting to loosen up. Okay. I mention this a lot in my ads on reverb that uh, the internal transformers on a lot of this Japanese stuff has provisions for 117 volt which it's unusual it's not exactly America's voltage but uh, to do it there's just a simple 
uh, tab right here. And uh, this is 100 volt, this is 110, and this is 117. So if a person just unsoldered here and resoldered here, uh, you would, you know, this would convert itself to 100 and, sorry, 110 volt in this situation, which would be better than 100, you know, something to keep in mind. Uh, these are really interesting boards in that this is handwritten uh, on this board. You see that? It's handwritten up here also. And everywhere, you know. Quotations, EM4, type 1. It, really interesting, in my opinion. And I love the little hand-tied looms here, you know. Um, really, they're just handmade, essentially, you know. Okay, well, anyway, let's uh, keep moving with this. I'm going to pull this top cover off right away because it's hard to get to the top uh, potentiometers with this in place. And it gives us a chance to look at what's going on behind there. pull that off and this way I can get to these two pots a lot easier I hit them a little bit from underneath but get them up here too I really love working on this old stuff and just seeing all the differences you know I've had quite a few of these machines and there's major changes to them over the years uh, but the little things that I find interesting are like this is a red bulb to show when you're uh, when it's in standby mode the VU meter lights up red but it's not a red bulb it's just been markered red by one of the workers and they do it after it's mounted so there's red marker uh, you know all around this area so you know it's just I find those types of things interesting anyway all right we're looking pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and pull this tape off and start cleaning those heads up and in very short order we can test this thing out I think just put this back in here so we don't lose it okay one thing I'm noticing here I think this head may have been replaced at some point if you notice it's a lot cleaner than the others and it's a little bit shorter than the others let's just look underneath and see if we, if we can find any indications of that well, it's hard to save from here but uh, I'm really under the impression this head has been replaced so let's see how good of a job they've done with that it takes me a long time to learn lessons but we're going to put the cap back on because I've definitely spilled enough alcohol over the years. Okay, that's done. I'm going to grab a little soapy water and uh, we'll clean that deck up a little bit on top. One thing I like about these Elks is that it has a little actuator, much like a Roland. Uh, so when you turn the machine into standby mode, it pulls your pinch roller off and allows you to keep using the machine without the echo. And also when you're storing it, you're not storing it with the pinch roller resting against the capstan. So you're, you know, these wheels tend to stay in really good condition because they don't get divots, unlike some of the Ace Tones and other earlier models. Right, this is just soapy water and a rag. And this deck is a little stubborn. You can see some stains here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of wax. And uh, while that is still soapy, we're going to hit that.
Not real talkative today. Uh, I don't want these videos to be any kind of a downer, but uh, you know, I've been spending a lot of time watching the Ukraine situation unfold, and um, it's definitely a tough situation. So we're hoping for the best there. Okay, we're looking pretty good so far. That cleaned up pretty nice. There's a, a young girl in Nagoya that uses one of these out, playing out. She's got a little simple drum machine. I forget what it is, if it's a Korg or an old uh, rolling drum machine. But she uh, has one of these. She sits this on top of her amp. She, she travels with a kind of a blue metallic uh, Aria guitar and uh, her amplifier and that little drum machine, and then an Elk EM4 that sits on top. The the amp and the drum machine and the Elk, that makes up her entire um, setup. And she's got a lot of energy. She's really cool, actually. Uh, I'd like to see her again. But again, due to Corona, it just hasn't been a lot of a lot of shows lately. Oh, we're pick, starting to pick up a little bit more in the way. Okay, let's pull this off. And even if I don't have the exact same piece, we can definitely do better than that. And um, let's see if I can get this cleaned up a little bit. You seeing this all right? I guess pretty much. Okay, I'm going to run over to the warehouse and see if I can find one of those pieces uh, and some junk. And I might take you with me. You're going to be shocked. Uh, by the state of this warehouse, <laughs> but why don't we come over and take a look at it? Okay, here's the warehouse, which is in total and utter disarray at the moment. Uh, but anyway, this is, gives you an idea of what's going on here. Um, we got un a lot of these units have not been inspected yet, so we got a lot to go through uh, before I get anywhere near caught up. So I've got quite a few things like this that I've picked up over the years. Just, uh, you know, I like, if I can find them reasonable, I like to get these PAs because they have an awful lot of pots and knobs and switches that are hard to find. You know, you can buy new things, obviously, but I like to try to use the correct pieces. So we've got a nice, uh, exactly what should be on that elk black piece here. I'm just going to grab everything from it. Uh, it's a shame to sacrifice that. It was in pretty nice condition, actually, now that I look at it. There must have been some other reason. I was hoping to find a good handle, but I've already robbed the handle off of that one. So we'll have to find a handle somewhere else. All right, let's get back and put this on anyway. Okay, we're back, and I left this wet rag laying over the corner here, hoping that we would uh, soften up this tape while we we're gone. Now we haven't been gone very long, but I was really hoping that that little bit of water would get this thing loosened up, and it it has worked a little bit, but not perfectly. So I think I'm going to try. We'll try one of these first. This is a glue applicator, and uh, but I found these things to work pretty good. You know, they won't scratch the surface, but my buddy was working on cleaning up his old motorcycle one day, and he's like, you know what I need? I need a tool that's exactly the consistency of my fingernail, and <laughs> that's the truth, isn't it? I mean, if we could just uh, package disposable fingernails, of course, they, they have them, but you know what I mean, not, not in the decorative sense. 
another tool that is pretty close though is a good guitar pick. I found those things work really well uh, as disposable fingernails. But let's try a little bit of lighter fluid on here. See if this gets us anywhere. Again, I try to use you know the least harsh alternatives here first before we start getting into something that's you know more abrasive or more caustic. I don't know if that's the correct term. That's more acidic, but you know what I'm saying. I think like a thinner or something like that. I think we're getting there with this. Hey, not too bad. I'll hit it with a little soap. All right, I think that made some uh, improvement. I was pretty fired up when I got over there. I'm like, oh, this, this nut is so much nicer. I'll use that beautiful chrome nut, but in reality, it's a different nut. So we're not gonna use that. But we do have the exact right piece of black plastic, so we can replace that. And I am going to use this washer. It seems to be in a lot better condition than the one that came off. Some of these are directional. This is one of them. Okay, that's an improvement, right? All right, we're looking good. Let's keep moving. Okay, uh, you can see it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off uh, off camera, which is just gonna involve me uh, possibly pulling these knobs, but uh, getting in here and cleaning everything. I think I will pull the knobs because you know they're they're offset enough that you can see behind them and. Um, if we don't pull them, we're going to have just a clean area around, you know, uh, there's going to be a dirty area where we, we can't get to. So let's see how hard this is going to be. Oh, hard. Let's see if we can get a little bit bigger one on there. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a good decision. There's a lot of... A lot of fuzz there. Okay, before I go any further with this endeavor, I'm going to take a little bit of lube and uh, hit these and let them anticipate what's coming their way, which is removal. Okay, they can uh, soak a little bit. There's, there's always one that just doesn't want to come, you know. Oh, careful. Good shot of my elbow. Oh, I'm going to pass on that one for now. I say there's always one I meant there's always six oh come on you dirty mess okay <clears throat> we're gonna let those soak for a minute I'm gonna work on this area so I'll, I'll work on this I'll come back okay people a little update as to where we're at here uh, I was able to get all these knobs off I had to switch up to uh, this little Toyota uh, screwdriver it's amazing but you know the amount of leverage that that extra width or girth there provides is just what I needed in order to get those off you just couldn't turn it with this 
smaller uh, shaft here. So, you know, it's it's amazing that that much different. Okay, but anyway, we got them all off, and uh, I pulled off all these nuts because they were, again, to be able to clean around here, you can see how dirty they are. It's just impossible to really get it properly. So we're going to clean this up, and uh, I'm going to clean up the surface rust that's on these washers, and uh, we'll put this all back together. Uh, these were pretty stubborn, but we were able to get them. So I'll do that. I'll come back. And uh, I was kind of low energy before. It, it was like... Uh, I don't know, 95 degrees in here. I didn't realize how hot this room had gotten and I was just dragging. So turn the heater off. I'm feeling refreshed. Here we go. Okay, we're back. We got these cleaned up and uh, I'll put these back on. Oddly, we don't have any black spacers here, but that's the way these are. It's kind of unusual though as far as consistency is concerned. Oh, I just unplugged my light. Hopefully you can still see me. Okay, the knobs are over in a little jar of soapy water. Gonna get those cleaned up. I think I'm gonna have to touch up a couple of them. There's a lot of they're aluminum knobs, and over the years they get a little chipped up or paint just flecks off of them. So I'll probably end up touching up a couple of those knobs, but I think you can agree that this is looking a lot better. Uh, let's plug this back in, see if that makes a difference. Better, right? A little bit. Okay, time to go get the knobs. Oh, I'll do this right now. And I should have done this before I cleaned up that whole face because we're going to get a little bit of electronics cleaner on here. So I should have done this before, but I'm going to do it now. I think you can imagine what's happening here, but with this cover off, we can see that we're getting in here and getting both contacts and the, you know, getting just getting that nice and polished up. So hopefully we make really good contact with everything. I'm not sure I'm 100% high energy anymore, but it's a lot better than I was sweating inside that sweater and with uh, the heater on just max. I don't know how that happened. Okay, knobs are all washed up, and they were dirtier than they looked, really. They looked pretty good, but, boy, they, a lot of dirt came out of them when I was washing them up. We're going to let those dry really good, and then uh, I'm going to paint those areas that need touch-up. Uh, we're going to just replace the tape on this VU meter. It's done. And this is all behind this panel, so you know we don't see it, but we'll just clean this up a little bit. Alright, we're not too worried about that. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this pinch wheel up. While we're waiting for the, I want these to dry really well before I start putting any paint on. So uh, this would be a good time to do this. And uh, I just got some pinch wheel cleaner, and this thing looks to be in really good shape. But again, learn from me. Put the cap on immediately, and we'll just clean up this pinch wheel. All right, it's looking good, huh? Doesn't go there. We'll get some oil on that in a second. And I guess while I'm waiting for those knobs to dry really well, I'm going to uh, demag these heads real quick. And I've shown this procedure in a lot of videos now, if you've been following along. 
So I think I'm not going to talk during it and I'll just uh, do it, but I'll show you it and uh, we'll fast forward through it so you can get the whole gist, but uh, without having to suffer through the buzz for that long. about putting uh, it's a you know a USB light and it comes undone on my little extension cord I thought about taping it but sometimes I like taking it apart so I'm just gonna have to keep fighting through it I guess okay we're looking good are we not this thing's a beautiful machine so I think it's time to paint those let me get my paint supplies out and we'll get rolling okay here's a little uh paint holder I made out of some scrap wood but it does a good job of allowing you to see all your paint. I got a lot of paint here. Uh, I still do it once in a while but it's been it's been a little while since I've done it but I used to restore uh, Hot Wheels and there's a if you go look at my channel there's a couple of Hot Wheel restoration videos a few years back. One I even made musical accompaniment for sang a little song for each of the Hot Wheels that I restored. But uh, it's kind of a fun, you know, I grew up working on cars and restoring cars and over here, uh, I can't really restore cars all the time. I work on my car quite a bit, but it just gave me a sense of uh, working on a car as oddly as that might sound because they're not cars at all. You know, they're little tiny toys, but uh, I just enjoyed seeing those little Hot Wheels come around. Most of them weren't Hot Wheels, actually. They were Matchbox. I really like the old uh, late 60s Matchbox. They just look so realistic. The Hot Wheels got pretty radical, you know, with the big hood scoops and whatever. Even as a kid, I wasn't so into those. But the Matchbox, it looked like you were holding in your hand a little miniature version of the of the double-decker bus or whatever it was, you know. All right, I don't think I'm going to have you watch me do all of this, but uh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying not to paint unnecessarily. We're just getting the spots that uh, really need it. I think I'm going to switch brushes. This brush is new, and it's it's, you know sticking together i hit it with some thinner hoping to loosen it up but we're going to try a different brush i'll do this and i'll come back okay i'm just finishing up on these knobs and i'm kind of laughing to myself here because uh, i don't know how i got there but i started imagining some situation you know i told you about those hot wheel restoration videos you know and i've just started imagining some situation where you're at the pearly gates or you know some form of that someone's judging you and they're like did you you know do you think you used your time wisely there on earth yeah i think so for the most part oh yeah yeah you optimized your your time that you were given yeah i would say so i mean what are you what are you alluring to here how do you explain these hot wheel restoration videos with soundtracks Oh, yeah, probably could have spent that time better, <laughs> but you know, whatever, there's uh, strange things we do. Uh, if anybody's curious as to what you're not missing, if you don't go ahead and search that video out, you know, there's a few of them, but uh, especially the song videos, here's one of them, all right, uh, there was a a Ferrari that I felt was the wrong color so I uh, sanded it down painted a different color and this is how that song goes it starts out with a harmonica intro and then it says faded Ferrari why are you maroon everybody knows Ferrari should be red you could go ask Enzo but he's already dead. 
he's already dead. And then with a pretty somber harmonica outro. All right, so that pretty much ensures you're not going to go find that video. But again, I thought it was kind of fun. I certainly had a lot more free time at that point in my life. I was uh, working pretty much one day a week. But the pay was such that I really wasn't motivated to go find any other employment. I was doing pretty good there. That was uh, when I was teaching some of these corporate classes. So I was getting by on one day a week and a few odds and ends here and there. Uh, the good old days. Okay, people, we're pretty much touched up. I don't think we want to paint every little thing here, you know, and retain some of that originality. But, uh, you know, the big shiny sections on these knobs certainly weren't helping the look of this thing at all. So I think for the most part we've... Uh, We've made improvements. We might find another spot here and there. Once we get them on, we'll see if there's some point that stands out to us. But uh, it just doesn't look good to have big chunks of missing paint, I don't think. Okay, I'm going to let those dry, and I'll get them mounted back up, and we'll see how we did. Okay, time to get this thing back together. Uh, I'm going to put just a little dab of uh, household oil here three and one I believe it is get that moving around a little bit okay all right that was easy next up let's get these back in Everything looks good underneath there, so I uh, wiped that up and uh, gave it a quick wax while we were singing to ourselves over here. I was singing another one of my Hot Wheels songs. I think I'm going to share with you right now. You're going to get those songs whether you want or not. This one is about a little blue Mustang that the roof was smashed down on and had some issues. And uh, it was entitled Mashed Up Mustang. And it went a little something like this. Mashed Up Mustang. Couldn't get much lower. Had a high giant hole. Smashed right through the blower and the windshield posts were gone. I did what I could do, I patched them up with baking soda and super glue and then I cut off the trailer hitch and painted the whole thing blue. I kept the rear window but the windshield is new, Mustang. All right. That's what you're missing out on. Okay, try to get these as lined up as we possibly can. Whoops. Let's just bring that out a little bit. It's strange that these shafts are a different size. Oh, they are. This, no, they're not. Okay, tighten that baby down. Mm. I think I'm just going to start using this as my go-to, all right? Are you guys uh, in agreement with that? Because I always use that, uh, you know, that little jeweler's one or whatever it is, that small little silver screwdriver, but this fits the slots really well, and it just gives you so much more torque, so why wouldn't you just use it all the time? That's, that's the question, and uh, I think I'm going to start using it. I wish, and maybe I will someday, but uh, i got to get a bigger garage because I'm in Nagoya, Japan, which is Toyota World Headquarters, and uh, 
there's so many great, especially now, sadly, with uh, a lot of manufacturing moving overseas. But there's a an opportunity to buy some wonderful equipment here in the Goya. Uh, you know, lathes and presses, things of that nature that, uh, you know, you could really get some wonderful equipment at a fair price. So if I could, if I had a little more space, I would, uh, have an awful lot of equipment at my disposal. I'll tell you that. Okay. Let's get this. I have to get it there. And then we'll, there we go. We're going to turn so that it's lined up properly. We'll give her the old torque specs. Oh, torque it to the way your thumb starts to hurt. It's about the proper poundage. All right, people. Look at Huh? Damn. That's looking good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this down and uh, bring the cabinet up. And I'm going to show you my technique here. Okay. If you remember right, we, we're missing a few chunks here. All right. So there's a pretty significant chunk. And... You know, if, if it's a really small one, a person could just touch it up with a little black paint and you'd hardly ever notice it. But something like that, I think it's to the point where we want to patch it as opposed to painting it. Now, this part is not visible at all. Let me see if I can see this, all right. Uh, this is overlap and unnecessary uh, material. And uh, it's not visible on the outside of the machine at all. So. Uh, what we're going to do here is just cut a little chunk of this off and we're going to take it straight down here. Uh, even though we don't see it ever, I try to uh, cut it off in a way that it doesn't look like it's, you know, it's not just hacked out of there. And then uh, we're going to pull this piece off. And I think we'll do the same on the other side, so it's consistent. So we're just going to bring it over here. And right about there, we'll bring her straight down. Okay. So now this is going to give us two little patches, all right? Now, the easiest way to do this, I've found, is... Get some of this away is we're going to take this piece of tape, you know, or a piece of tape, and I'm going to put it right over this missing area. And then if you push down on it really good with your fingers, you can basically see the exact outline. It's going to be hard for you to see it, but I can see the exact outline of what we're missing. And then I can just take a pen and trace that uh, missing portion out. See that? So that's the piece we need. And then with a little light behind, we can line this up. You seeing that? You can see that I've got just enough, you know, around it. I try to do it so I'm not wasting anything and only cutting one corner, but whatever. We're going to just do it for this, for the video here. Now I'm just going to cut this shape out. I found if you try to make a square repair, you know, it's really obvious, but if you try to repair the exact shape that's missing, it's a lot less likely to be visible or you, know, you reduce the visibility of it. Now you got to remember which direction you were. And, all right, I just made a mistake and see if anybody can guess what I did. Yep, you guessed it. I put the tape on the wrong side, so I cut it so the back side is showing. I mean, it's in the shape I want it. However, it's in the, you know, it's opposite. So the, 
you know, I think you're getting it. I got to put the patch on the front so that I'm cutting out that piece. All right. So, hey, you know, I'll be the last to admit it, but I'm not perfect. Okay, uh, let's get this off. Try her again, round two. I think we can go a little higher than what I'm getting there too, but let's see if we can do this because I'd like to have a couple more pieces of repair. All right, that's a better job. You see how I got it right on that one edge? So let's see if we can trim this. Okay, let's think for a second. Is this the right side out this time? Okay, yeah. All right, you see? Think twice, cut once. A little variation on the old adage. Okay, trim it, trim to win. Take her down, work her over, work it, bring it back, trace it, cut it. I've also found that uh, smaller is better. You know, if you try to jam a big piece in there, uh, it just doesn't look right but if it's a little smaller then you can touch up whatever you're missing with a little black and it's it's not real noticeable but if you've got a piece of vinyl overlapping sticking out then it's really obviously that you know it's really an obvious repair okay uh getting the tape off is about the hardest part okay there it is we're gonna get that oriented in the proper direction which uh Appears to be right there, and we'll get a little glue on here. This is this is not I can tell right now going to be a great repair, but again, it's better than a big nasty chunk of board showing. So I'll put that in there, and then this type of glue. If anybody's worked with it before, it's best to put it down and then pull it back up and let a little air get underneath there and dry a little bit they say two to three minutes even seems a little excessive but so we're going to let that uh, just air dry for a second and we're going to scope out the rest of the situation this I think I can just re-glue and touch up we don't need to cut a piece for that so for the cover I think we only have that one spot all right i'm gonna blow on it and try to encourage the drying process all right there we go is that the right way no okay see what's going on can you? Let me see. I'm just looking at my hand all the time. Okay, anyway, once we get here, we can start to push this down a little bit and get it where you want it. Good thing about this glue is once it's dry, you can kind of roll that off. Like remember when you were a kid, you'd roll them little uh, glue boogers and chuck them at your buddies and when you're in elementary school. Everybody do that. Uh, so we don't have to worry about the glue right now. Once we get, once that dries a little bit, we can roll off the excess glue. But we want to kind of get that corner down there. I should have taken a toothpick and got a little glue underneath there a little bit more but hey I think we're a lot better and I think you'll agree once it dries again I'll roll off the excess okay you got the idea I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch a bunch of them but uh, we do have two more uh, one two more that I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this one right here and uh, three more I'm gonna do this one and this one so we got three more little patches and then I'm going to clean this up and we'll put this beast back together. Here we go. Okay, we're getting close to the time where I'm going to put this back together. My little patches turned out pretty good. I haven't cleaned this yet, obviously. So once we get this cleaned, uh, they're going to blend in even more. 
but I don't have any screws if you remember and the advantage of having a lot of inventory which I do right now is I've got another machine that has the proper screws in here remember we only had one and it wasn't correct so this will let us see what exactly we need and I went over to my screw section I really don't have what we need exactly but I've got the same screw in a much longer length and I had some washers here we go uh, this is gonna work perfectly once I get them cut down to size so here's our our washer and here's our original and they're almost identical there's a little divot just like that the heads a little bit smaller it looks like but you know I don't know, it might be exactly the same. I can't see where, okay. I think we're exactly the same, so we're looking great. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut these down, though. Uh, but let's get about the right length. I busted out this old trusty Big Daddy here to cut through them for me. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be too precise here, but I would say right about there. Let's see if we can cut these. Oh, God, they're a little harder than I thought they would be. <clears throat> Holy, oh my God, he's titanium. Good Lord. All right, let's see if we can, oh my God. Holy crap, this is, uh... geez, what are these made out of? Oh. I mean, I haven't been using the old, uh, you know, the gym squeezers lately, but holy crap. I thought I was gonna snip through these with ease. Okay, we got one. Man alive, that's considerably harder than I anticipated. That's why I grabbed these old things and I thought, well, we'll just eat up these jaws instead of using one of my good tools and not anticipating that I was going to do damage to the jaws at all, but oh, we are definitely damaging these jaws. Oh my god. Oh. Okay, we got them though. Hey, the old jaws, uh, they held up pretty well, I guess. Okay, doesn't really matter. We're going to designate those as the screw cutting players from here on out. Now, uh, I don't have a tap this small, so let's see if uh, we can use the nut as a tap. And I'm afraid I've got such big burrs on here that it's not going to work. So uh, I'm going to take this thing over to the, uh, I'll just spin you around, see if you can see it. Forgive the mess. All right, we got a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to shut this off. Got some new knobbies for my little bike. Look at those bad boys. Ruffin. Big rock chuckers. Okay, uh, I should clean off that bench before I do this, but we're just going to do it. Safety first. Safety first. Where did I put that other one? Here it is. Okay, let's spin ourselves back around. And uh, now we'll see if we can use this nut. What we did is just taper them down a little bit, you know, so. Hopefully the nut will go on. Beautiful. That's all we need was a little taper. Again, we're not going to use the nuts, but look at that. Oh, beautiful. All right. But we need to uh, get them to be able to thread into the, the bottom of the case. And uh, 
Man, I might want to get some more of these. I mean, they look so much better than the ones that were in there, and they're almost identical. So, I'm starting to think they are identical. It doesn't really matter, but... Okay, anyway, we got new screws for the bottom. That's taken care of. I'm going to put this one back in my other machine before I forget. And then we'll put these back in my little holder. I'll save these two. You never know when you want a little threaded shaft for some reason. Who knows? Okay, uh, I'm going to go clean up that case and we'll put this baby back together and test her out. Okay, people, we're in the home stretch. Uh, a few things have happened since I last uh, had the camera on. And uh, I've cleaned up the cabinet and finished gluing that stuff, obviously. Cleaned up the cabinet. I uh, was able to find a handle, which is good news. And uh, replaced the handle on the cabinet here. I'll show you that in a second. I'm just going to get this on. I just washed my fingers, hands. I didn't just wash my actual fingers you know what I'm saying uh, but uh, we got that and uh, here's our new handle uh, it's just I've replaced this section only but let's get these back on and I cleaned up all the chrome on here and this thing's looking great oh except for right here I just noticed I'll, I'll get that okay but now it's time to test this thing out so uh, let's plug her in. I already did actually. And power on. Okay, let's get her on standby and I'll plug in. Check. 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 We got a little VU meter response. Check. 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 That's good. Okay, no echo. Um, echo's down. Check. 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 Get some more here. I uh, forgot to spray these pots early on. They're going to be okay, but I like to hit those. I only see one on this machine, actually. Well, let's adjust that and see if we can get some more echo out of this thing. Check. 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 Let's just start by moving that around. You can hear it's dirty. I don't like the way that cord is sitting right there. Let's get that cord away from there a little bit. Check. 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 Still a little dirty. Check. Check. One. All right, that seems to be the sweet spot right there. Check. 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 One. All right, let's get her over here. Check. Check. 
Check, 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 Awesome. Okay, check. Check. Another thing that uh, alters the amount of echo is the position of this tape. Let me, oh my god, it's tight. Let's see if I can raise this up and you can see the tape. Check. 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 You know, that's the ideal path, but a little resistance sometimes. Check. 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 You notice that the difference there? Check, 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 check. All right, I'm not sure where we left off. I went and uh, mailed a uh, beautiful Ace Tone EC20. Shipped that out to Illinois. Bears still suck. And uh, went and got some contact cleaner and a few things. So, but anyway, we're ready to put this back together. Let's uh, slide this in here. And we've got our new screws that are going to look so good, I think. I'm going to have to pick some more of these up because they are, uh, let's see if I can get them in a shorter length. So I don't have to cut them, but they are absolutely perfect. Those look great. They look just like brand new. They're exactly the right size and everything. Beautiful. Okay, let's get that top on there. You can revel in this thing's glory. Where is the top? Oh. All right, people. Elk passed inspection clearly. It's written right on there. It's uh. Okay, from 100 to 117, but like we saw on the back, we can adjust those pins if you want to uh, change that transformer around. Anyway, there it is. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Um, our little patches turned out really nice, I think. Uh, we got a little bit more glue we can get off of those. They look pretty good. Got a little bit of white paint up here. I'll probably work on that a little bit more. Anyway, there it is. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to hook it back up and we'll just give it one final test. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear it without, without uh, a lot of repeats. So, so A, 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 A. Single, single repeat. repeat. B, boom. B, boom. It's just a little just bit, a little bit uh, uh, slower, slower delay, delay so, it's so it's the next, the head. next head. C, 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 C. 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 We got, got sounds like three heads there. C, C, D, 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 D. That sounds like the fourth head. E, E, E. Check, check. Not sure what's going on. D, D, C, B, A, A, B, B, D, D. Sorry, C. He doesn't know his ABCs. D. E. E. B. Ah, I thought these two sounded the same, but B's got a lot more of a repeat here. Let's one more time. B. B. There's no initial uh, wet signal 
our dry signal. Check, 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 Chopper coming in, doesn't it? Okay, I'm freaking out. That's 
just awesome in its own. Listen to that. All right, people, I don't think I'm talking to anybody anymore, but uh, anywho, it's an Elk Professional Echo EM4, and uh, she's brought, brought back from Golden Slumber, and she's looking great. Look at that thing. Mm -mm. We got it. We put this guitar away. The hinges cleaned up beautifully. The cabinet looks great. Uh, sounds wonderful. And... Home's looking good. We patched up a couple divots. Um, paint on this thing is actually in really good condition all the way around. We got absolutely beautiful screws that look just like they're supposed to. And again, the chrome hinges look good. The bumpers are nice. I mean, what are you looking for in this world? Huh? What are you looking for?